Hello there and welcome back to the Aqua Open Source YouTube channel. My name is Anais. I'm the Open Source Developer Advocate here at Aqua Security. And in this video, I'm going to show you a new feature from the latest Trivi version 0.44.0 release that allows you to filter vulnerabilities by status. Different container image vulnerabilities, for example, have different statuses. Uh, that relate to how and when the vulnerability is or is not fixed. Now, filtering by status allows you to only see the vulnerabilities that you can take actionable steps towards fixing them. Now, in this video, I'm going to show you how to use that new feature. Let's get started. A lot of times when you perform a container image vulnerability scan, for example, so if I say Trivi image and I scan an older node container image, then we are bombarded by lots and lots of different vulnerabilities. So in this case, let's find the scan result. As you can see, there are lots of vulnerabilities. Ah, <laughs> We can see there are over 705 vulnerabilities in this container image identified by Trivi. That's obviously a very overwhelming amount. Now we can perform different filters, add different filters, to the container image scan to narrow down the number of vulnerabilities. For example, we can say we only want to see the critical issues. So we can say severity and we say critical. And in that case, we are only provided by two issues that are critical within the container image. And then we can look whether we can take any actions upon them. Now, in those cases, there's no fixed version for those issues. So there's nothing we can actually update or change because it, there's no fix available. So something else that we can do to narrow down the number of vulnerabilities is say the flag ignore unfixed and in that case, we only see the vulnerabilities that have a fix available. And as you can see, instead of 702 vulnerabilities, we only see one that has a fix available. Uh, so we can look for a new container image that has this vulnerability fixed. Now, this is a medium vulnerability. So it might not be too high of our priority list. But the thing here is that ignore and fix is a very handy tool to use if you're using third party container images. So for example, you're going through the container images on the Docker hub and you find a container image that you want to use. You can see if it has all of the vulnerabilities that can be fixed being fixed. So if ignore unfixed, if that flag is used, if that doesn't return any vulnerabilities, then there are only vulnerabilities that don't yet have a fix available that can't be fixed in a way. So Trivi, however, allows you to do much more filtering. First of all, if you want to use Trivi, the Trivi CLI, make sure Trivi is installed. It just takes one or two commands, depending which um, installation option you're using. Then make sure Trivi is installed. If you crave for Trivi version, the latest version right now as of the recording is 0.44.0. So this is the latest version. Then we can head over to our documentation. Now, Trivi has different security scanners, including vulnerability, misconfiguration, secret, and license scanning. We're going to focus in this tutorial on vulnerability scanning. And you can scan different scan targets, different resources, for example, container images for vulnerability issues. Now, as part of your scans, to not be displayed with over 700 something vulnerabilities, you can do different configurations as part of your security scan, as part of your vulnerability scan. So, for example, as part of filtering, filtering vulnerabilities, there are different options. I explained all of these existing options up to the latest release in the latest video that's linked below. So for example, filtering by severity, by findings ID, and much, much more. Now we have added in the latest release filtering by status. So there are lots of different statuses as part of the vulnerabilities um, that you are displayed with. So for example, if uh, the maintainers have decided this vulnerability does not actually affect um, this platform, or if it does affect this platform, but there's no patch released yet. So basically you can say, okay, you want to ignore the affected ones because if there's no patch released yet, then you can't fix them anyway. And then the fixed ones you could also ignore because you ultimately only want to see the ones that um, you might or might not be affected 
by the unknown ones, the ones that will be fixed, but are not fixed yet, uh, the fixed that are deferred, end of life ones, you might only want to see those others that are more critical to your situation. Um, so you could uh, filter by different statuses to have more fine-grained results. And that's done with the ignore status flag. Now you cannot use the ignore status flag and the ignore unfixed one at the same time because the ignore unfixed one ultimately uses the statuses will not fix, affected, fix the third and end of life in it. So if you want to use, um, so you wouldn't use both at the same time. Basically you would filter, if you filter by status, you would filter by the different statuses that you want to actually ignore. If you want to ignore all of them that don't have a fix available, you would use all of these flags or all of these um, options, let's say. So we can perform now the same vulnerability scan, but ignore the ones that are affected but don't have a patch available yet and the ones that have been fixed already. And then we scan again our node 20 container image. And now as part of that scan, we see that there are only 37 that we might want to investigate in more detail. Even if they don't have a fix available yet, we might be affected by them in a more serious way. Um, and that allows us to basically filter through the issues that um, have not been patched yet or um, are not planned to be patched or have been patched already in that case. Now we'll head over here to our documentation. This page is also linked below in the description and try it out yourself on your hundreds of hundreds of vulnerabilities. As always, I really hope this video was useful. If it was, please do give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for upcoming videos. If you have any questions, please comment them below, below the description of this video to this feature, or you can also join our Slack channel, our Slack community, and post questions in a trivia or trivia operator Slack channel. Now, it would mean a lot to myself as well as to all of the maintainers who make trivia possible if you could give us a star on GitHub. The link to the repository is below. It takes two clicks. Click on the repository, click on the star. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching. I hope to see one of our next videos. Have an amazing day. Bye bye.